Hey, what's up, guys? Jonathan here, Wild Cockatiel Games, Unity Game Programming for Beginners. And in this video, we are going to make our snake able to add a tail to itself. Now, our goals for this video, excuse me, <coughs> I have a bit of a cough. Uh, our goals in this video are to make it so the snake can collide with a food object and add a bit of a tail. However, our goal in this video is not to make the tail follow the snake head properly. That's another can of worms and something we're not going to address until the next video. So for now, let's add some food into the scene. And to do this, we're going to go into our sprites, go into this uh, textures item, and this one here is kind of a food item. And I'm just going to drag and drop this into the scene. Now in order to make, well first of all, I'm going to rename this as food. Type that food and press enter. Now in order to make our snake able to pick up this food, we need to do a couple of things. We need to add colliders. Colliders are what create bounds around our sprites and allow objects to basically connect with each other. So I'm gonna type in here box collider. Now if you see, you get box collider and box collider 2D. You wanna make sure you add a box collider 2D. Box, just regular box collider is for 3D games. This is not a 3D game, so you do not want a box collider. So make sure you add the 2D. And then you'll see that there's this green line that forms around your sprite. Now, if this green line does not line up perfectly like this one does here, you can just press Edit Collider and you can drag these bounds around. Uh, but in this case here, I don't need to actually do that because uh, it just w goes on there perfectly. Now, for the food, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, and I, you can see that it's going to actually the bounds are going to appear where the sprite bounds are by default. Um, in this case, this one is actually kind of round, so just for some variety, instead of adding a box collider, I'm going to add a circle collider 2D. And there's only a, a, there's only a circle collider 2D, there's no circle collider, and well, that's because uh, you're using spears in 3D, not circles, so there's no overlap there. And same thing here, you can just adjust the radius to make it look about right. And yeah, it looks pretty decent. So one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add onto both of these a rigid body 2D. And this just allows our objects to be uh, basically have physics components. But in this case, where it says dynamic, this means it would obey the laws of physics. Uh, it's going to be affected by things like gravity. So if I was just to run this right here and right now, if I start this up, our snake's just going to fall down because he's being affected by gravity. I want to change this from dynamic to kinematic. And then do the same thing, add a rigid body 2D onto the food and change it from dynamic to kinematic. And that just means uh, it will still kind of obey physics, but it, it's going to listen to uh, user inputted controls. So there we go, it's still moving around. Okay, now also if I, right now, if I try to connect these two, the snake's actually going to, uh, oh no, he's not going to bang into each other because of the rigid body. Um, what we want to do is we want to change on both of these objects, we want to change the uh, colliders from a, well, we just what we want to do is check this box here that says is trigger. And this means that uh, two objects cannot bang into each other. Now, because of the rigid body on it, we're not really having that problem here, but still, we're going to be thorough and just change this to is trigger. Okay, so now let's make it so that when the snake touches the food, uh, he's actually going to spawn a new game ob he's going to spawn a new t uh, tail piece. So let's take a look into the code. Well, first of all, we need to identify what is going to be used as the tail piece. So I'm going to go up here and create a public variable and call it public game object tail and semicolon. Now if I control S, save that, go over here onto the snake head. I'm going to see that it on the script, it's now asking me for a tail. And I'm just going to take one of these pieces in here. I'm going to take this one that's a solid square and drop that into uh, the tail. I grab the wrong thing. Oh, because I cannot take it directly out of the sprite. What I actually need to do is drop this into the scene first. And then I'll be able to uh, basically put a tail in. However, what I want to do, well, I can do it like this. Let's just drag it in, and now it identifies that this piece here is a tail. However, I'm going to change this to tail. 
and we're going to add a couple of components on this. Number one, we're also going to add a box collider on uh, box collider 2D onto the tail. And we're going to make that a trigger. And then we are also going to add a rigid body to it and make that kinematic. Now we're going to start turning these into prefabs at the same time. And prefabs are reusable assets. So I'm going to create a new folder here. Call it prefabs. And I'll, I'll explain this a little more in detail. But basically, uh, what we want to do is turn all of these objects we have into objects that we can just reuse with all their components attached to them. So if I was to drag the snake head into this prefabs folder, I'm zoom in, just drag, drag it over. And I'm going to do the same for each of these, food and for tail. Now what happens is if I take any of these prefabs and drag them back into the scene, they're going to come up here and they're going to be this bluish color in the menu options. But you're going to notice when I drag it in, it already has the box collider attached. It already has the rigid body attached. It's a duplicate of the item as I have created it in its original form. And these are the objects we're going to work with. So if I take a look at the snake head here, you're going to see also that under the script, it doesn't know it no longer has the tail game object uh, attached to it. That's because this is a prefab and this was a single instance of the object here that we attached before. So what we want to do is attach prefabs to prefabs. So I'm going to select this snake head prefab in the folder and I'm going to drag this tail prefab and attach that on top. And now if I was to drag the snake head in here, I would see that it also has the tail automatically attached to it. Now there's really no reason to have more than one snake head into the scene. Uh, I'm just using this as an example here. And I can, actually one thing I can do is just drag a new snake head into the scene so it uh, gets automatically applied. So it's not automatically applied. Why wasn't that automatically applied? Oh, because I probably, I, I reapplied it in the scene. I'm just going to do that one more time, drag the tail over top, drag my snake head here into the scene, and I see that it has the tail attached. Okay, I'm just going to center this directly on the X, Y, and Z. Okay, so now we're going to go into the script, and we're going to add some controls that allow us to uh, basically add a tail. And I'm going to delete this tail from the scene. The tail should not be there by default. Okay, so if I go into my script, we're going to have to add a new uh, a new method here. And we're going to add this one is has a specific name. And this is called void on trigger enter 2D. And then we're going to type open parentheses, but we're going to type something else here. And we're going to type uh, collider 2D trigger, close parentheses, open squiggly bracket, and close squiggly bracket. Now this is a special method. It has it's pre-named, and this is going to get called whenever uh, two objects, two uh, two box or circle colliders that are checked as triggers collide with each other. Actually, only one of them has to be checked as a trigger. And this is the uh, and this when the one object collides, it's going to get a reference to the other object. And it's going to be referenced in this variable here, which is called trigger. So what I'm going to do is now say uh, we want to basically this is this script is attached to the snakehead, and we want to say if you are colliding with food, you're going to do something. So first of all, um, we need to create some type of condition where it can recognize that it's going to collide with food. And for this, I'm going to go up here to where food has a tag, and I'm going to go add tag. I'm going to click this little plus icon and I'm going to type food and press save. Now you have to actually add the tag separately once you've created it. So I'm going to click on food again where it says tag. It says untag. I'm just going to go over here and select food. Now we're going to go back into our script and we're going to use an if statement here just to check it out and see if this is working. So, so under here I'm going to go if trigger dot tag and we're going to use two equal signs because we're doing a comparison. So we're going to say if trigger.tag equals food in quotation marks, we're just going to check to see if it's recognizing that. So we're going to do debug.log and we're going to type collided with food. 
Now this is a way of just checking your code is working before actually uh, doing anything, before uh, typing any more complicated code. So let's put the, open the console, press play, and have our snake touch the food and see what happens. Okay, so collided with food, you can see that there. So it is recognizing that a collision took place. I suggest you do this test uh, the same way I've done it, and if it, you don't get that debug.log statement showing up, uh, you make sure you are co have, recognizing that collision before going any further. Okay, so we don't need that if statement. Actually, we can keep that there just for the if trigger.tag, but we can get rid of the debug.log. We don't need it to know that it collided with food. What we do need to do is spawn a tail. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a new game object. We're going to uh, go call it game object new tail. We're going to make this equal to uh, a piece of code called instantiate. Now instantiate basically spawns a new game object. In this case, we want to spawn a new tail piece. We're going to, and I'm just going to finish this uh, code up. Well, I'm going to open and close the parentheses, but we're going to go inside of here. And it, actually, you know what? I'm going to do it this way. If I open up one bracket, it tells us what we need inside of here. So the first thing we need is the original piece that we are create that we want to create. So we just called that tail. That was the game object that we dragged over before. Next, it's asking for a transform. Basically, where do we want this object to spawn? So for now, I'm actually just going to go up one line and I'm going to create a spawn location for it. We're going to say uh, vector2 spawn pause equals new vector2. We're just going to give it some default coordinates just so we can make the tail spawn. We're just going to call it uh, 5 and 5 and close that off. Now under here, we're going to add that ver vector2 variable spawn pause. And the last one, it needs to spawn with a rotation. We need to specify that rotation. So we're just going to give it a default rotation. And to do that, you just type quater quaternion.identity. We're going to close that bracket off. And there's one more thing we have to do. We have to tell it what it's going to spawn as. And we're going to say as game object. OK. Now let's save that, play and see if a new tail piece spawns. And it does. I've, it's kind of off the center of the screen. Maybe 5 and 5 is a little extreme, but you can see that it is spawning. And if I and you can see it's also appearing in the in the inspector and every time I actually connect with uh, the food piece, a new tail is spawning. It's all off the side of the screen, so it wasn't a very good spawn position. And we're, like I said, we're not going to worry about making it follow or move yet. Uh, but that is kind of long enough for this video, so I'm going to stop it here as we have done what I set out for us to do.